Resolution 214-17, Awards of Public Access, Open Space and Natural Resources, Preservation, Maintenance, Stewardship Grant to Namamo Okava. Approves a grant of $48,850 to Namamo Okava to protect and preserve and restore the Kava properties, tax map keys 95016.006 and 025 and 95017 005 and 007, pursuant to Section 10 16 of the Hawaii County Charter, reference communication 294, introduced by Ms. David. Ms. David. Thank you very much. Um, Council members, this resolution is being brought forward um, for the maintenance, the, the Punk Maintenance Fund Grant. If you recall, in December, this matter came before us in Kona, and um, I think Mr. Um, Kai, yes, um, what was the last name? McGuire. McGuire, yes, sorry came forward and expressed his um, concern that the, the listing of the director's names was the only thing that basically was missing from this stewardship grant. And um, based on that, you know, I, I didn't, um, uh, we were taking the recommendations basically of Parks and Recs at that point in time until I did some research and I discussed um, a lot of things with um, this application with um, the punk department, um, then Alex, um, Kelly Polo, and Hamana. So what I found out is that when you folks provided the, the names of the directors that was requested, I think at that time it was the sense of this, this body that you folks have, you know, provided what was missing. The only problem was whether we could um, we could go ahead, or the council member could go ahead with a resolution based on the recommendation from Parks and Recs, which was not to approve. So, um, I'm asking for my council members' support on this, and the reason being. Um, in an effort not to um, set in a, a precedent on moving forward with something that wasn't recommended. This is a special situation because when I investigated this further, I found out that this group was involved from the very beginning when Uncle Abel Louis was um, asked to leave. That was a very sensitive issue, and it, um, it was very difficult to deal with. And I, and I know that when they tried to um, have a first community meeting, this particular group came forward and wanted to care for the place, seriously take care of it, because they come from Kau. Um, they're related to Auntie Pele Hanoa. Hanoa. And they are so tied to this community that I didn't realize, and you guys have a communication in your folder that I asked them to provide, which is their, um, a timeline of when this group was first involved. And they started prior to 2012. And they have been doing maintenance and caring for this place since then, working with the prior administration, um, using their own funds, their own um, uh, donation of hard time to care for this place. I personally went on a field trip when they had the entire football f um, team from Kamehameha schools and went down on a cleaning. Um, uh, it was a great day, and you guys have been doing a great job. Um, and the reason I'm asking and I'm bringing this resolution forward is because I feel that when we discuss and we talk about having our our younger generations carry on this this um, malama aina seriously, we talk about it. You folks are living it. You folks are doing it, and you folks have done it since the very beginning, on your own time. And now I feel that it's appropriate that we support you and allow you to get some help with this maintenance fund. That's what it was created for. And I think um, 
you folks have demonstrated what we as older people, you know, <laughs> junior kapunas, um, really, really... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet, you know. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and I really think I, I, this is what I've dreamed about, right? Because it's a lot of commitment. And for us, that's been through years of trying to um, advocate for taking care of our um, resources, our cultural resources. Um, it's not easy. And so I recognize, can I have a little bit more time? <laughs> and I recognize that you folks are an example of what we, at least I, see um, in our young people, the commitment that um, I wish I had when I was your age. I started a little later. That's why I'm, I'm old now, but you know, <laughs> you guys are like, um, to me, it makes me really happy that you folks are following through. And um, not only following through, but you guys are committed because you come from the place, you're connected, and you can't replace that. So regardless whether, um, you know, the recommendation, and I appreciate the recommendation from, um, from Parks and Recs, and I had a discussion already with Parks and Recs. I expressed to them my feeling about this because I think you folks have demonstrated um, above and beyond that you folks really love this place and you're taking care of it and you're not getting in the middle of being torn between um, issues except caring for the place. So I, I applaud you guys. I really aloha you folks for doing that. And um, I just ask for you guys' support because um, this group, if you look at your what they've done, in the last several years, um, yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I thank you guys. I really do. I really do. Mahalo, you folks. And I ask for you guys' support. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. David. Ms. Ruggles. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to also express my appreciation for, for what you are doing. I was half raised in Kawu and half raised in Puna, and so I have a lot of family there. And uh, actually, my brother, yeah, he um, he helped build the the surf shack. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just really appreciate that you guys are continuing to um, to demonstrate resilience to the whole situation. It is it's very complex, um, and. I have a question. I remember um, in the original, or not the original, but one of the Pong Fund requests, uh, the breakdown of the the funds. Is there going to be two full-time security guards there now? Can you please turn on your mic and identify yourself? Wait. Um, the, the way it was written, we're going to contract. Could you identify yourself, please? Oh, sorry. My name is James Akao with Namamo Kwa. We are going to um, think of more passive ways to implement a security system, so using like a game cam. And I've been working with the um, Mauna Kea Watershed Alliance and, and becoming more familiar with the technology. So um, more creative solutions to enforcing security. And then um, having whoever we contract be um, a certified security guard as well as someone who's licensed to do cultural and natural resource management. So like a, a two-fold or two bird with one stone kind of approach. So there will be a security guard there? Yeah, um, when that person, whoever is doing the contracted services is down there performing um, their tasks. Oh, okay. Just so on, only when somebody is down there doing work. Yeah, and then the passive security system with the game cam I see. mounted on um, a tree near the gate, the front gate, and then maybe one that's closer to the beach. Okay, thanks. And then that same person would be tasked with checking the game cam and um, having those updated photos sent to their phone. Okay, okay. Right on. Thank you. Right on. Did you want to add something? 
Hi, my name is Larry Koe Kuhupu-Felder. I live in the district of Kuhu, town of Pahala. I'm one of the people that volunteered since day one and been a supporter of this group since exactly the meeting that we had. And before, I walked in from Ninole. That's about a few miles away at Black Sand Punlu Beach. I used to walk there when they closed it down because you ain't going to stop me from getting in there to surf or take care of the place that I love because we was told the access to the beach is not supposed to be stopped. Public access after five years, any roadway is supposed to stay open. And how we looked at it is take care of the place. We shouldn't be grumbling about something if we're not going to take the initiative to do it. So don't be a grumbler. Be a worker. Don't step over the trash. Pick it up. Um, we will start from our older kapuna, like Uncle Abel and many other elders, my grandparents and many more. <coughs> Sorry about that. I kind of choked up. I ain't used to this. But um, the right idea, like how she said, you talk by the older people, carry it on. So you can show the next one to take over. We just want to keep the place safe, make it accessible for the public and nice, presentable, like how we always was told to upkeep. And make sure, like, yesterday we had a group of YCA members of about 70 members, cadets, come down and help us. We've been doing this since some years back. And like how she said, we wanted to make sure that we don't bite off more than we can chew. We wanted to do this from the beginning. We didn't want to make ourselves look like we asking for a whole bunch of money and we ain't going to be able to put out. So show before you able to ask. That's what we've been trying to do. So I thank you for actually saying that. And I am a certified security officer with the RMT security. I work at the transfer station. I just got off of work at Pahala. Um, I do security there. I've been doing that since 2009 with the county at the transfer stations. And I am certified. So the time that I am there, I am a licensed guy that can at least address the certain issues and make sure that it's documented. The idea of what we want to do is document everything that goes down there so the next generation that is to take on, they have something to go off. We want to leave petroglyphs into the ground for the next generation, like ours did for us. So the idea of it is take care, make sure that everybody is able to come in there safely and do their natural practices, because we Hawaiians 24-7 not from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I cannot pick our armor at noon. I cannot go fishing for certain fish or gather all during the day. I understand the rules and everything like that, but the idea of the place is more. It was a home to our ancestors. It was a fishing village is where we learn and train. And with all that being said, we like to share that with everybody and let them know that. So it's a schoolroom. And however we can carry on, we will. And with my initiative, I come in there and clean, check the trash cans, and make sure that we're able to communicate with Public Works to get trash bag liners. They help us out a whole lot. So I like to think right now, Public Works, Alex Kaleli Polo, um, Hamana Ventura, Colin Tomei, everybody, including you guys self, for taking the time to even acknowledge this because we've been wondering if it would ever be noticed. It doesn't even really matter, because we're just going to keep on doing it anyway. <laughs> but I'd like to thank you guys, and that would be about it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. So just state your name again. Oh, sorry, James Akal. I'm on call. In terms of um, active security, while Kawe is on duty, that would be our active security system. But... In a in the greater scheme, um, creating a or cultivating a culture of caring, I think, creates a safer space and creates less opportunity for individuals to commit crimes such as larceny or whatever, whatever it may be. So I think by bringing children down and by putting up signage and maintaining the space, I think it creates um, less opportunity for folks who are um, less well intentioned to. To, um, whatever commit a crime that's sort of the approach we've been taking like we cleaned up one of the campsites and set out 
uh, trash bins, the campsites were probably used by drug addicts in the past, and um, spent, a f spent a few weekends cleaning it out, and we noticed after a month's time that the place had started taking care of itself, meaning the people who started using the space saw the etiquette that was established and sort of followed suit. So I know act active is probably the, the strongest and documentation is the, the next strongest approach to security. And I've had my wallet stolen out of my friend's car years ago, my whole backpack, and there was my social security card in there. And it was a whole mess for me. And I understand the security is an issue there. But I think if we can create a culture of caring through our active work and by bringing people down there, it creates and shifts the energy to a place where um, those sorts of activities become nominal, hopefully. Yeah, I agree with you, thank you. Um, I also just wanna say, I, I remember, was it like five years ago when we were doing all these community events down there, we had concerts, we had surf contests. It was, it was a really great, great space and then since, the whole thing with the county really, um, it yeah, it changed a lot. And so I'm, I'm encouraged by, by what, what you guys are doing, and I hope to see it back thriving again. And if there's one more other thing that I can mention. Um, Just state your name so that. My name is Larry Felder. Um, I'm from Co. Um, another thing that we always been asking about, the salt pan stone that stands right out here in the middle of the walkway out here it is originally from the area of Koa and we always ask that it may ihoi mai yeah it has the plaque right out there its purpose is not to grow mildew but the dry sand I mean dry salt for people the Pakai. and I believe it would be a great thing like how Miss Rocco said we had many event sale down there. Why not carry one that will mean something to, to the people and something to history and something to you guys, you know what I mean, legacy when it comes down to it. Return the rock home mm -hmm. and to take care of all these things. It's like, it's not hard. It's simple. You know what I mean? We can just put in the work. And, and it ain't, we ain't asking for build a, a mansion. We just asking for something to return. And like with all the things that's being done and taken care of down there, the idea of it is security is, sorry about that. <laughs> a security is not just watching or anything like that, but assuring that people that park nearly a quarter mile away at the highway and is willing to walk that far in there is it's kind of taking a gamble and a risk, if you know what I mean. Like you left your car out there. Our president, our president of our group left his truck out there and it was stolen. But he got a return, but not everything in it, you know what I mean? <laughs> the idea of it is many other cars was broken into, the belongings was taken, hardworking people. They only come down there to practice what they learn, to go fishing, to go surf. They shouldn't be subjects to victims to anything like that. So that's the reason why we push for this and maybe in the long run maybe allow access to the people so they can be a little bit closer and if we could get the if i got my own truck i've been using it since day one to go down and help haul out all these things call in all the equipment and take out all the trash i don't i don't even worry about it because seriously that's what i want to see the place to be because it's, it's like a home to me it's where i used to practically live i know mrs ruggles brother very much because we used to hang out down there all the time me, his dog, my mom, my dad, everybody, Uncle Abel, and everybody else. The idea of it is carry on a good thing and not a bad thing and take care of the place. And to put those game cams up there is to kind of reassure people or let people know that this is what happened or try to give the right authorities a heads up, like this is what's going on down there. Because money and time is, is an issue for everything. Everybody's job is important. So if the Makai got to go from Minoli'i and there's only four on the active, by the time they get to Kua, brothers, they passed Puna already. And whoever took your stuff. And it's kind of poho that there's no way of knowing what happened. Because when people have their things being taken or 
or their hard work being ruined, it's kind of and discourage people when you see busted glass out there and you go for a park, you say, ah, never mind, we're going to put on a loop. You know what I mean? And we like to reassure people that it is safe because no matter what, I parked out there, but many other people does get treated that way. Some people, they look at me as like, oh, that horn, he good, no bother him. He, he take care of the place, but that's not the case for everyone. And some people, they don't know, they don't care. They don't really care. They just on their next move to do whatever they want to do. So with that being said, the idea of putting the game cams out there would be a good idea, to, one step closer to being able to understand what's going on. Because in the last five years, I would say over five to six break-ins, stolen cars, all different types of things. Some of these events even made it to the newspaper where the guys they take the things for cars, for stolen cars. With that being said, our district is so big. We can fit all the other islands in our one district. We may be the biggest, but we got the smallest population. With that being said, we have the less resources. Not trying to make it seem like we we begging or anything like that. It's just harder for the Makai to want to have to do their job plus respond to something like that. So if they cannot be there, at least they will have that image or that moment on camera to where this is justifiable as evidence. And then the next person can have some kind of justice. You know what I mean? That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Ms. Ruggles, was that your last question? Okay. Anybody else have a comment or question? Um, Ms. O'Hara? I just have a comment. Um, I'm so impressed with what you guys are doing. Um, how much, um, how large is your group of um, volunteers, nonprofit? Um, with that being, being said, we have a few members in the back. We have a few. We have a lot of members. With that being said, we have from a lot of young kids, a lot of the YCA, a lot of different programs that have came down there and they're in support of us. A lot of recommendation letters of recommendations, but members or whatnot, we have a lot of close knit people, a lot of surfers, a lot of different people that they come down when they can because they have their own families and whatnot. But I would say at least a group of over twenty or more. So when you have a, a work day or something, you get about 20 yeah. or more people? Yeah, some, yeah or, or more. Or more, but I, yeah. I, I don't want to exaggerate, so I would try to give you a, a <laughs> decent number, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But we have a lot of different people. Oh. We have a lot of different people in support yeah. of it. Yeah. And with that being said, if there's any way, what we need to do more is to document it so when these questions, we're able to have that mana'o there for you guys. We are seeking to do so to make sure that we do that. Like I always say, we started off from a small little thing. We didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. We wanted to make sure we learned the rules before we played the game. Mm -hmm. So when we came in, we came in trying to play smart, play chess instead of checkers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so we came in trying to address what is the do's and the don'ts, what we can and what we cannot do, how we cannot use the Handicap Act on these lands to s put things there. We, we, I heard these things. I learned these things because we have great resources like James and Puyokai and many other more, Matt Clark, Ron Terry, all these other people. Mm -hmm. they, we took the time to meet these people and learn what they do and see how it can benefit the place, not us, but the place. Mm -hmm. And the families, they, they support it. The people in the community, they support it. The people of the island, they support it. And with that being said, there's not too many people that can mediate a situation with some arguing activists the way that we have demonstrated. <laughs> you know what I mean? We try to opono oh, pono and put everything else aside, and the place is what needs to be taken care of, not an argument. And we we always try to make sure that that place is for the good, and that everybody understands that. So when they bring their kids they continue that and they kids enjoy the place as much as ours and many more to come so i like to say you know what i mean with this what you guys support i'm one of the main people that will go down there and i put in i i was there yesterday the day before and many other times i'm always there i have access to the key to open the gate i communicate with the people whoever i have to if i have to call hamana 
Alex, if I got to text him, if I got to call Park and Recreations, Dennis, Alejo. I live around this community so well, I'm aware of who works there, what days they work, all these different things. And I work at the transport station. I know where the trash can be put, where it can be dumped, where it has to go. With all these resources in this one place, I'm willing to put in that time and that work like I've always been doing. And my family is too. And many other people of the community because that's our backyard. That's where we get our fish. That's where we we get away. When we can't get away from the pavilions and the jack tour buses and all South Point being crowded by outsiders, you want to find a place of refuge. You want to find a place to where you can sit, sit down because not too many people want to just let your kids kill it all over, you know what I mean? Down there, everybody's kids is it's like your own. You're going to look at it as you're going to take care of because that's the idea. That's what we were taught. So we're just carrying on what we were taught and trying to make an example of what needs to be done because we see it in many other places around this island. But who don't have much? Mm-hmm. I see it in Kilka. I see it in Kona. I see it in many other places, but we like to introduce it to Kool. So thank you, guys. Thank you. Mahalo. And thank you for your work at the transfer station, too. (laughs) And there's some of the groups that we've had down there. State your name Um, first. um, James Akao, Namamokoa. So we've had um, Kamehameha Schools, Kapalama High School team, the whole football team. Um, We've had Halau Kupu Kupu summer program from Kamehameha Keao. And that was, I think, upwards to 40, 46 students in addition to the chaperones we've had um the youth cadets from what youth challenge, youth challenge and they um bring a bus load of students i think upwards from 60 to 70 they've been down there about once a quarter for the past two years at least two three years um we've had stem programs from uh hilo like the pipe specific intern programs for exploring sciences they've been down there Last summer, um, we had Ma'a students from the STEM program through the Pipes office come down there. Um, there were probably only about eight students. We had Manawaya Hanakahi come down, part of the UH um, STEM program Pipes office. And then Ka'u Community Work Days. We had one recently in the last month, and that happens maybe biannually or quarterly as well. Um, and we've had the Mililii community approached us to host a work day for them. Um, Kaimi Kaupiko of Kalani Hale, he wrote us a letter of support. They're supportive of our, com- our community efforts, and I myself helped them with their uh, monitoring program that Kao Springer, um, part of Conservation International. She's helping to develop a marine monitoring program, and we actually stay at Kaikahele's house when we do that. Um, so they're they're in strong support and have written letters of support for our group. We've been approached by Boys and Girls Club. These are just um, prospect groups that I'm listing now, but people that we're trying to work into the mix. And um, groups range typically from six to 70. And we cater to small groups, big groups. We cater to anybody that expresses interest and is persistent enough to fill up my schedule as typically what happens in my life. But um, Love, I love Ka'um from Ka'u. We grew up, me and Kai are classmates. Kai is also a classmate. Known each other our whole lives practically and um, grew up surfing and throwing that down there and still run down there for um, rest and relaxation and to give, a, give back to a place that's created our identity. So mahalo for listening to us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you do and... Um I guess we can't say there's nothing to do in Kaul because you guys sure stay really busy. So <laughs> thank you so much.